Do some practice questions of permutations. Now, I am a teacher of data management in Ontario. It's a grade 12 course in our curriculum. And uh, yeah, we start off with some permutations after doing some Venn diagrams, but well, those are a different set of videos. So I'm gonna do a bunch of examples. I've already taught the lessons. So this is just to help people understand. So if you're here from somewhere else, you might wanna look at a lesson permutations before you try, try these examples. Anyways, here's the sheet. Here's the questions. So you might want to pause the video right now and try to do all of these questions, and then I'm going to do them. Ready? Let's go. Whoop. That's not what I'm looking for. Some blank sheets here. Yeah, those are all the sheets that I'm going to try to tackle. So question four, I believe, is what we were starting on. And question four says, how many three-digit numbers can be made from the digits one to five? Okay, so our set here is one, two, three, four, five. And the cardinality of the set, n, is equal to five. So there are five elements here that we are going to be using. We're making three-digit numbers. So technically, k is equal to three. I'm going to be using three seats. This is how I do numbers and arrangements of words, as I drop these little seats here. So for part A, it says repetition of digits is not allowed. Okay, so I drop my three seats because I want to arrange three of these letters. So the way that I think about this is I take these five numbers and I put them in like a little magic bag. So think about them as like foam numbers from when you were a kid and they're all in a bag. And you are going to pick one of them to start this number with. So I'm going to pick any one of those things. So there are five numbers in there. So remember, this is not the number five. This is that there are five numbers that could possibly go there. Now, in your little bag of foam numbers, after I pulled one of those out, whether it was the five or whether it's a three or whether it's a two, it doesn't matter which number I pulled out, there are only four numbers left in the bag. So to arrange them, I only have four left there. So whatever number I put first, there's only four left in there. And now that I've put two numbers down, so I put one there and one in that spot. Now there would only be three in the bag. So that is how it works with no repetition allowed. Now, for those of you who have been looking at your perm notation, this is five pick three. So five is the number you start counting at, and three is the number of seats. So how many you count down. Three is not because of this three. Three is because you start at five and count down three spaces. So this is five pick three or five four three, or you can evaluate that using your calculator. Or maybe I could do this in my head. Uh, 20 times three is 60. Should be good. B, okay, repetition of digits is allowed. So this totally changes the question now. Now it doesn't change the fact that I'm dealing with these numbers and that there are three seats. But if repetition is allowed, I reach into my bag and I drop any one of those five and then they're all still in the bag because repetition is allowed. So if I put a three there, I can still put another three there. So it's five and five. Now, this one is written as five to the power of three. And five to the power of three is 125. So you guys follow the difference? Repetition is not allowed. So if I placed a three there, I only have those four other numbers to choose from. And then I'll put one of those numbers down, like let's say a two, and then I've only got three numbers to choose from. So that's how I make my permutation. Whereas here, when repetition is allowed, I could put the three down, and then the three down, and then the three down. So every time I reach into that bag, there are five numbers that I can possibly place. Uh, no repetition is allowed, and the number must be greater than 500. OK, so let's start with our three seats. Now, the restriction here is that the number must be greater than 500, which means that the number has to start with a five. So a five has to go here. Now I'm gonna write a little five underneath. This is just my form. You don't have to do this, but I put a little five underneath to show that it has to start with a five. Now, how many fives are up there? Or how many numbers up there could make this a bigger number bigger than 500? Well, there's just one number, the number five. Now, if I take that five and put it on that seat, how many numbers are left? Because repetition's not allowed, so I can't use the five again. So I'm down to four and then down to three. Hopefully you get the hang of this. So this is going to be equal to 4p2, which as you can see, 4 times 3 is 12. Now, it says list all the numbers fitting this description. OK, so in order to list the numbers, first of all, they're all going to start with 5. So I'm going to start with all of my 1s. So if it was 5 and then I pulled a 1, then it could be 2. 
or I could have 5, 1, 3, or 5, 1, 4. Those are all my 5, 1s. Now let's go, what happens if I pull a 2? So if 2 comes second, then it would be 5, 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, 5, 2, 4. Uh, what if I pulled a 3? 3, 1, 3, 2, can't do 3, 3, 3, 4, can't do 3, 5, because 5 is in front. And lastly, if I did 5, then 4, I could do 5, 4, 1, 5, 4, 2, 5, 4, 3. And those are all of the possibilities. D. Repetition is allowed, and the number must be less than 300. Okay. So we're still dealing with those. We're still dealing with a three-digit number. The number must be less than 300. Okay, so this time, think about what it has to start with. In order to be less than 300, it can't be a 400 number or a 500 or a 300 number. It has to be a 1 or a 2. So here it could be a 1 or a 2. So there are two numbers that could possibly go there. Now, remember, that number doesn't mean I'm putting down the 2, and it definitely doesn't mean I'm putting down both of those numbers. It just means that I could be putting down either one of them. Then, after I put one of them down, I have 4 and then 3 to choose from. So remember, this 2 is representing how many could possibly go down there, just like this 5 was, and this 4 is, and this 3 is. So it's representing how many could possibly go down there. Not that I'm going to put both of these numbers on that one seat, because that doesn't make any sense. Two numbers can't take up one number spot. So I could have a 1 or a 2, and then after that, I've placed the 1 or the 2. It doesn't matter. Let's say I place the 1. I've got 4 left to place. And then I'll place something else, like let's say the 4, and now I've got 3 left to place. Uh, so this one, well, that's kind of tricky here. So notice that this 2 actually fills in the pattern over here. So 4, 3, 2. So you could write this as 4, P, 3. Now, technically, you could probably also get away with writing this as 4, P, 3 times 2. Your teacher will probably be okay with that. But this is a simpler form. It's better. Now, what happens if we multiply to 1 on there? Well, this is getting kind of getting kind of tricky here. But if I have... 4, 3, 2, and 4, 3, 2, 1. They're the exact same number. So this technically is also equal to 4, P, 4, even though there aren't four seats, which is weird, which is also equal to 4 factorial. So all of these answers are the same. I'm sure that your teacher would accept this because, well, you've got three seats. So this one makes more sense. This one I don't really like, but 4 factorial is maybe simpler than 4, P, 3. I don't know. Anyways, probably use this one because there are three seats. Uh, what's that equal to? 12 times 2? 24? Let's hope so. OK. Oh, man. Was I off the screen there? Whoops. My bad. That's what I was writing. OK, bumping up. 6. Sorry, I'll check my overhead here to make sure that I'm actually on there. I'm actually watching a screen of this so I can check. I apparently wasn't looking. The manager of a baseball team has picked nine players. For the starting lineup, in how many ways can he set the batting order so that the pitcher bats last? Okay, we, we don't want the pitcher batting a lot. They usually are not so hot. So we want them to bat last. So there are nine players and nine spaces. So n is equal to 9, and we're going to arrange all of them. So k is equal to 9. If you want to draw this in seats, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And now we are going to find the arrangements. But so the only criteria is that the pitcher's got to go last. So I'm going to put this p down here to say pitcher's going there. There is one pitcher in the batting order. So you might have more pitchers on the team, but there's only one pitcher in the batting order. So he's going to go there. So you always have to start with your restrictions. Just like up here, I started by putting that 2 or that, so the 1, 2, or the 5. So I start with my restriction, then I go back to the front. So here I was already at the front for my restriction, but if your restriction's at the end or in the middle, it doesn't matter. You always start with the restriction, and then you go to dropping the rest of the people. So now, how many players do I have in that little magic bag of foam players? I have 8, and then 7, and then 6, and then 5, and then 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1 all the way down. So this is equal to what we call 8 factorial, because 8 factorial counts from 8 all the way down to 1. Yes, this is true that this is 8p8, but we don't use that. Hmm, that was easy. 8. Emilio has picked up his textbooks for the seven courses he will study this year. In how many ways can he arrange them on his bookshelf if he wants to keep the French and German text side by side? Ooh, fun, adjacent. So, 
n is equal to 7, k is equal to 7. So this is, again, a full permutation. We're not doing a partial perm. Like, this was a partial perm up here. When we had 5 and we were only permeating 3 of them, these were all partial perms. This is a full permutation. This is a full permutation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. OK, this is how you do adjacent questions. You are going to take the, what, German and French? Is that we won't be side each other? So you're going to take the German and French, and you're going to put them down. So let's put the French and German right down there. Now, I'm going to join their seats. Now, there is one French and one German, but I'm not going to actually even write that up there um, because I want to use this seat for something else. After I drop those two textbooks, there were seven textbooks in the bag. I pick out French and German specifically, and then I have five left for this seat. So whatever they are, there's five of them. And then there's four, and then there's three, and then there's two, and then there's one. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, though, the French and German didn't have to go at the start. They could go anywhere. So they could be here. So I hope you can see that. They could be in this many spaces. They could be in one, two, three, four, five, six different places. So French and German can be in six places. So that's what I put on that seat. So that, you save that seat for the number of places that French and German can be in. So this is places. So these are the other textbooks. This is how many places French and German can be in to still be adjacent. They don't have to be at the beginning. They could be in all these different places. Now you also, though, are going to times this by 2. So you're going to times this by 2. And this is for what we call the switch. So hopefully you picked up on the fact that French and German don't have to be beside each other as French then German. It could be German then French. So this is how you do an adjacent question. Start by joining the seats. Well, you don't have to, but start by writing the seats. Put the French and German underneath, so write these things down in brackets. There is one of each, and then there's gonna, you count the places that they're going to be in. So in this case, it's a full permutation. There's going to be in six places, and there's going to be the switch. So this ends up being, so see how six completes this pattern? So instead of five factorial times six, this is six factorial. But we need to times it by two for the switch. There's question eight. This is how you do an adjacent question. Uh, and this question is how you do what we call an ends with. But that one was pretty easy. The adjacent one is definitely good to know. OK, question nine. 12 different portraits are in the Ling family's collection. In how many ways could five of them be hung in a row on the living room wall? OK, so this is a partial perm. The n value is equal to 12. There are 12 paintings, but the k value is only equal to 5. So we only want to arrange five of these 12. So remember, 12 is what we're going to start counting at, though. There are 12 paintings in the bag. It's just that we only want five of them. So with these 12 paintings, I'm going to pull one of them out one of any of the 12, so there could be 12 possible paintings there. Now, after I pull one of them out, though, we can't repeat the painting, because, well, unless you want to remake the painting, but that would take a really long time and be ridiculous. So 12, then we count down, 11, 10, 9, 8. So by the time you get down here, there's only eight paintings in the bag. Now, how do I write this? Well, I write this as 12p5. So remember, this perm form is we started counting at 12, and we count down. So there's five seats. So there's five numbers starting at 12. That's how we know what this perm form. B. OK, B's got to give us a restriction here. Grandma Ling's picture must be included and must be hung right in the middle of the group of five. So grandma and a random assortment of people. Not grandma and her favorites, but grandma and some randoms. One. Grandma's got to be there. We are assuming that there is one painting of grandma. Then, so remember, restriction first. Now we go back to the beginning and drop all the rest of them, all the rest of the randoms. So there's 11 paintings in the bag. Why? Because grandma was one of them. So we took grandma out of the bag, placed her there specifically, and then we go back to the bag and there's only 11. And then we drop one, and there's only 10. And then we drop one, and there's only 9. And then we drop one, and there's only 8. And now we have 11p4. The 1 doesn't matter. You can multiply by 1 if you want to. We could multiply by 1 all day. It doesn't change anything. So 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 is 11p4, because it starts at 11, and there are four seats. Cool? All right. 
Uh, what is num? Speaking of eleven, I might as well just do it over here. So question 11 says, show that the number of three letter words, now words is in quotations because the, it's not actually a word. Like if I'm gonna make up a word CPG, we're gonna count that as a word. So it's not, they don't have to really make up words. So it's really just the number of three letter arrangements formed from the word campground. Okay, so campground, N is equal to well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. N's equal to 10 in campground. And we are going to arrange three letters. So you're going to get, well, 1, 2, 3. So the three seats, we started at 10 because there's 10 letters, then 9 letters, then 8 letters. So this is equal to 10P3. Now, we're probably going to have to evaluate this to show that it is the same as ground, the number of permutations, so full permutations of ground, so N6, K6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we start at 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, which is 6 factorial, or 6P6, but 6 factorial is better. Now, do these things actually equal the same thing? Well, we could check it out this way by just multiplying, or sorry, just punching it through our calculator. 10P3 is going to give us 720 and 6 factorial is going to give us 720, so check, they are the same. Your teacher probably wants a little bit more um, verbal written stuff here about them being the same, but that's all I'm going to show you. Now I could show you though that, that these things are also going to be the same because, uh, well, by factoring here. So let's take 10, 9, 8, and break that up. So let's try some factors of this. What's 10 as a factor? We've got 5 times 2. And then 9 is 3 times 3. And then 8 is, so this is 10 times 9 times 8. And then 8 is 2 times, well, let's use 2 times 4. OK, so see we've got 5, 4, 3, 2, and then we can also just times by 1 for kicks there. 1, so the only thing we're missing is the 6, and boom, there's the 6. So these things can turn into 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So there's a cool way to show it by doing some prime factoring, but I'm pretty sure that if you just wrote that, and that would be good enough. Okay, let's hope I didn't waste enough, there's too much room on this page so I can still get 12 done. 12, find the number of ways of arranging the letters of matching. Okay, so matching, N is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are eight letters that we are gonna arrange. When it says find the number of ways of arranging the letters of matching, we're assuming it's a full perm. So we're gonna arrange all the letters, so N is eight and we're gonna arrange all those letters. Okay, now here's some restrictions. Oh wait, not yet. A is with no restrictions. So no restrictions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, you probably don't need this anymore. Hopefully you've got the hang of this. I'm going to start at eight and I'm going to count my way down. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one is eight factorial. So I'm not going to waste my time filling out those seats once I get the hang of things. When they're easy, like no restrictions, yeah, I don't need to waste my time. Um, the first letter must be an M. Okay, so again, you probably don't need to waste your time with too many of these seats. So I'm going to drop the M. There's only one M in matching, right? Check the word again. Yes, there's only one M. So that's going to be one, and then when I go to back to the bag, so remember that magic bag of foam letters? I don't know why it has to be magic. Maybe just imaginary, that's the word I'm looking for. The imaginary bag of foam letters. So you pull one out, and now there are seven letters in it. And then you pull out a seven, and it's six, and then five, four, three, two, one. So now you, can, you guys can see the countdown going on, hopefully. So we can stop here. It's seven factorial. So one times seven factorial is just seven factorial. Uh, C, the odd numbers position, the odd numbered positions must remain the same. Okay, this one I am going to write out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the odd numbered positions. What does that mean? Position one, which is M. Position three, which is T. Position five, which is H. Position seven, which is N and there are one of each of those. So they're gonna remain the same, so I'm gonna drop ones on all of those. There's one M, there's one T, there's one H, there's one N, they're gonna remain the same. So I'm just gonna mix up these four. Now, well, I've just, I, there were eight in the little bag there, my imaginary slash magic bag, and 
I've just used four of them already. So that means that there are four of them left in the bag. And then I go to this spot, and there's three left in this spot, and there's two left in this spot, and there's one left. So that is four factorial. All right, D. Last one. The arrangement must end with NG. Hmm, that's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So NG, it has to end with it. There's no switching, there's no adjacent, there's no moving. So it has to end with NG. So there's one and one. You go back to the beginning and drop your letters. So two of them are out of the bag, so that means I do six. Five, four, three, two, one. So six factorial. So this one was eight factorial. This one is seven factorial. This one's four factorial, and this one is six factorial. Whew. Done. Next page.